ASEAN for the first time ever has conducted its first joint military drill. Now this is being seen as a threat to China because we know how escalated the tensions are in the South China Sea. The ASEAN wants to send a message that although we may have division on certain matters, but when it comes to international law and order, we are together. So we must be prepared in the face of any threat, be it geopolitical threat that is being posed by China and other threat as well that is related to climate crises. This military drill is important from the perspective of the changing situation. We are going to discuss many things today from the perspective of GS Mains Paper 2nd. There are going to be important preliminary facets in this hidden like Easter eggs. You have to point it out. I will help you pointing them out. Also, from the perspective of the mains examination, of course, political science and international relations, very important. So, these are the many important things that we have to cover. Do not worry about notes because I provide the notes through my telegram channel that is by the name of Pooja Devedi, UPSC. If you have any queries regarding this examination, you can also talk to me on my Instagram and follow me on threads. So, Baby steps for ASEAN as it wraps up first ever joint military drills. All the 10 ASEAN countries attended it. Also, this actually started on 18th September and finished on 23rd September. Now, what is the logic behind this drill? Will it be conducted next year or not? Because this was the first time ever. It remains to be seen. See, ASEAN is a grouping of 10 nations. This includes Myanmar, Vietnam, Laos, Cambodia, Thailand, Malaysia, Singapore, Brunei, Indonesia, Philippines. These 10 countries are a part of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations, the ASEAN. ASEAN came into existence in 1967 through the Bangkok Declaration. Now, when it was seen that old war has done such a huge damage to the world, ASEAN thought, these countries from Southeast Asia thought, why not we have our own grouping? So that in case of any crises, we can stand together and help each other out in the times of need. So ASEAN basically developed as an economic grouping. So that all in all, in a unified manner, it has much better negotiation capabilities against the West or against any other country. Because they had a shared cultural, historical, belief system, all these important commonalities, on that only they built the ASEAN. ASEAN is an integral part of India's Act East policy. And it is important we know about the developments of ASEAN from the perspective of the Indian international relations. Moving on. Yes, I would like to suggest that 22nd of September we launched our badge. This batch was the P2I batch for prelims, mains and interviews. If you are a part of this batch, you will get a huge support for not only prelims, mains and interviews when it comes to the GS part, ethics, essay, GSAT, language papers, everything is included. And we are closing our batches soon. So make sure you take admission as soon as possible. Just use the code PDLight so that you can get this course at 29,999. Okay, so this was the first ever joint military drill. and. It was conducted or organized by Indonesia. Interestingly, Indonesia was the first country as in it was, uh, it was on the proposal of Indonesia only that this joint military drill has been conducted. Also, this was a five-day series of naval exercise. That means the navies were the major ones that were implementing the drills. It happened what is close to the, south, uh, to the island of Batam, which is south of Singapore. Here is the Batam island which is the south of Singapore. So these kind of questions could be asked, map based question. I will formulate a question for map as well. Do not worry about that. What kind of responses were done? What kind of exercises were done? Humanitarian disaster response and improving cooperation between countries, militaries. See, we know that climate change is very real and Southeast Asian countries, most of the countries have a huge coastline and this makes them vulnerable. So, in case of any crises, they do not want to depend on any other country, such as China, India, USA. Of course, why would any grouping want to depend on any other country if they can, you know, depend on themselves? So, in order to do that, they have conducted this drill. 
also the geopolitical situation escalation is so loud in south china sea specifically by china and also the self governed area of taiwan is being threatened by china so it is something it has a lot of things to do with china also although no country will outrightly spell it out yes we are doing it against china but yes because this has been a military drill it has to do with china as well it was first proposed by indonesia it started from indonesia south natuna sea and joint maritime patrol simulated medical evacuation search and rescue operation and disaster relief effort confidence building measures were done it also allowed the militaries of asean member states to strengthen collaboration brunei cambodia indonesia lao malaysia myanmar philippines singapore thailand vietnam these many countries participated all the 10 countries all the myanmar came as an observer state why because the five consensus program five consensus point that had to be implemented by myanmar asean said why buddy why are you not implementing it so when asean has seen that myanmar has failed to do it it invited myanmar but as an observer also east timor or timor leste is going to be the next member of the asean and hence it was also present supposedly we can say by 2025 or in 2025 east east timor or timor leste will be a part of the asean so it will be the 11th member moving on hmm? average now let's talk about the climate issues average temperatures in southeast asia have risen every decade since 1960 so this has been one of the driving forces that we need at least if we cannot mitigate the climate change right now at least we must be prepared in case of any threat occurs vietnam myanmar philippines and thailand are among the 10 countries in the world which have been most affected by climate change in the last 20 years supposedly we talk about the tsunami and earthquake in palu of indonesia this has shown us how vulnerable these countries are in 2013 more than 5000 people were killed as typhoon haiyan swept across central philippines in 2004 how can we forget the indian ocean tsunami that left more than 160000 people dead in indonesia alone now who are the asean security what are the asean security challenges and i can also say who are the asean security challenges apart from china asean wants to ensure that many other groupings such as quad occurs these groupings they just do not think of themselves as the sole savior of the asean waters so asean is not only rival having a rivalry with china but also with quad occurs so that is why occurs which is a grouping of australia us and uk to develop to provide nuclear powered submarine to australia and then we have the grouping of quad between india japan australia and the us so there are so many countries that are involved in the asean waters specifically indo pacific waters so asean wants to ensure that it is so near to our water we must ensure that indo pacific becomes asean centric as i told you it's not only having a rivalry with china but china is a huge driver of it brunei malaysia and philippines and vietnam these are the certain countries with which china has beef or dispute in the south china sea and china has stepped up its activities in the south china sea with the help of nine dash line map i will tell you about the concept of that as well with asean is struggling to articulate a cohesive and unified response that means there is a division among the asean countries itself some countries are on a bandwagon with china some countries are hedging actively some countries are hedging passively some countries are outrightly calling out china but some do not want to do that so as a unified grouping it cannot have a policy against china so this is one of the reasons why asean is failing has failed to counter china's uh, claims in the south china sea ascx that was the exercise that i'm talking about took place against a backdrop of rising tensions in the south china sea and china has deployed its coast guard maritime militia as well as fishing fleets to stake its maritime claims in the south china sea in 2002 China and Southeast Asian countries did try to have a plan to resolve any disputes between them with respect to South China Sea but no headway has been made and in the near future we cannot see any headway making place now moving on if we talk about how china has perceived the asean when asean was created china wasn't happy with it honestly speaking china thought that asean is being created in order to counter china 
and china back then wanted to become a world power but one thing that was very clear with china was after the period of time that if i have to become a global ruler i must first have a rule over asia and southeast asia is an important part of it so although china and asean's relationships had its own had its own ebbs and flows since 1991 china tried to ensure that it is ruling over asia with respect to southeast asia so in 1991 asean and china began a dialogue process in 1996 china became a full dialogue partner of the regional body when the crisis asian financial crisis take place china decided not to devalue its international currency it also helped thailand with an aid of over 4 billion us dollars and that was either through the imf framework or by bilateral channels that means by itself only china could give loans indonesia for also that form of export credit and emergency medicine was also provided after that first informal asean china summit happened in 1997 in kuala lumpur also china became a part of many asean led forums such as asean regional forum asean plus 1 plus 1 is china asean plus 3 who are the plus 3 china japan south korea and then we have the east asia summit which was formed in 2005 of which india is also a part okay i have in depth talked about this as well in 2003 china acceded to the fact that maritime cooperation is important in 2012 china established the permanent mission in asean now recently president xi jinping has said recently as in since the last 10 years we are seeing the evolving policy of china that we need a 21st century partnership between china and asean so let's talk about 21st century partnership china's goal was to basically see gradual and limited changes within the status quo power image what does this mean this means that china wants to ensure china wanted to ensure that i start developing relationship with asean not in a very haphazard way but gradually and slowly but my image as a powerful country must remain so that means it tried to become a benevolent power which it failed to do so india is a benevolent power so china's periphery diplomacy that means diplomatic relationship with its peri with its peripheral or neighboring countries southeast asia and the asean was an important part of it now as i told you that through the nine dash line map nine dash is basically a like a u shaped area i have drawn many dashes maybe 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10. so these are the nine dashes and through the nine dashes china says that entire south china sea is my blue soil we know about the brown soil that is the territory the land territory blue soil is the territory beyond the land that is the waters but other countries such as vietnam brunei malaysia philippines are also having claims they have overlapping claims and china always wants to bully these countries out of the question that you claim the south china sea by any part so china's policy with respect to asean has become more maritime centric so 2004 china initiated the china asean maritime mechanism in 2011 it also set up a 3 billion renminbi china asean maritime cooperation fund in 2015 it hosted the asia pacific heads of maritime administration initiated courses in mass rescue operation as well trying to show that all the asean countries have to depend on china one way or the other but what is china's narrative as of recently from 2010s china has initiated efforts to contest contest consistently the claims in the us if any country is maintaining good relations with the asean countries china doesn't like it and it has always said that asia is for asians which implies a china chinese Mon monroe doctrine which doesn't fit well with its proclaimed commitment to globalization it wants to globalize it wants to ensure that its products are reaching at the global level but it wants to say that asia is for only asians so this doesn't sit well it becomes very hypocritical china's development assistance to asia remains highly limited which is compared to that of japan and japan is an ally of the usa now these are certain countries of asean which have diversion in their approaches towards china some are actually happy with china it's bandwagoning with china such as cambodia laos and brunei 
some want to hedge against china as in it does, they do not want to de- remain dependent on china but still they cannot say it outrightly so they are you know in a in in that kind of position 50 50 position we may be 50% de- uh, you know dependent on some other country but 50% we have to be dependent on china these countries are thailand indonesia philippines malaysia and myanmar all the philippines is changing its stance now active hedging there are two countries that are actively hedging against china these are singapore and vietnam now in 2012 how divided asean is over china we can get and gauge it from this fact a stand off happened between china and philippines over scarborough shoal that is in the south china sea and uh, vietnam want uh, philippines wanted that a unified condemnation has to be there against china but it wasn't so so philippines was very upset and disappointed over divisiveness over the kind of division asean itself had against china so this is one of the reasons why we see china being all powerful in the south china sea how do the militaries of these countries stack up you know if we have to conduct military drills we have to ensure that our aims of the militaries are in line with each other singapore says peace and security should happen to deterrence and diplomacy not outright war but if this fails then swift and decisive victory over the aggressor it also holds training exercise with us australia china and other countries in the region state of the art equipment it has mostly it is sourced from the usa then indonesia it has the policy of protecting the country and its people from forceful threats and exploitation as well as to take part in the establishment of the world order philippines wants to uphold country's sovereignty support the constitution and defend its territories against all enemies close working relationship it has with the us it also conducted its largest ever joint exercise with the us this year it also for the first time stimulated an attack on enemy uh, uh, enemy ship with the usa it allowed the usa's wider access to its military bases under the enhanced defense cooperation agreement so that is why with philippines we can say now from passive or hesitant hedging it is moving towards active hedging thailand also get much much of its weaponry from the usa but it is still broadening the procurement from china so that it can show that i am not against you then myanmar and vietnam also rely heavily on equipment and arms from russia now this is a prelims question for you in my last question only mansi answered correctly make sure you answer this question well so that i can take up your names in the upcoming class when was the east asia summit established 2002 2003 2004 2005 thank you so much for watching